I hope uh, many of you have used network before or network analysis and I hope to make uh, the talk a bit interactive uh, because network L is a very small uh, small package, a small library, but I think it has great potential. The potential is not in the library itself, but is in the people that uh, will use it. Uh, so I want to maybe at some point to learn some of your stories about the network, how do you use network and how this package can be useful on, on what are you doing. Okay, so and before we start, how many of you have used network analysis or package like NetworkX, uh, iGravi, yes, raise your hand? Okay, perfect. Uh, so you know what a network is, uh, nodes and, and links. Uh, this uh, project started, uh, I'm, I'm doing, I'm finishing my PhD in uh, maths in, uh, in Queen Mary, but it started together with uh, uh, Startup Network, which is a small company I created in Italy. And uh, uh, this is not updated, it's now one year and three months old, but actually I worked on it just for, for three months. It's tiny, three hundred line of code. Uh, at the moment, I'm the only developer of it, but there are some people in, uh, in Queen Mary in the Startup Network helping. And the performance are good. It helps to save memory, mainly, and to do computation on time-varying graph in a very small amount of time, with computation is around 70 seconds. I will tell you more details. So let's start from the, the first part of the, of the name, network. So a network is a, can be represented as a graph. You have nodes and, uh, and edges. And these are a useful uh, uh, model to represent many real world systems. Uh, we use it for um, representing the, the brain network, uh, the transportation system like the tube, or communication system. Uh, the nodes are the system elements, uh, the neurons in the case of the brain, and the synapses. Uh, represent the links, uh, or in the, in the case of the underground system, uh, the, uh, the tube station and the connection between them. And the thing you do with network analysis, I think many of you have done something like this, you try to rank uh, nodes. Uh, for instance, try to understand which is the most important node or the most critical node in a communication system. You try to understand if your uh, network is resilient to attack or is uh, fault tolerant. And uh, usually you rank node. You say you do some analysis on, on this graph and at the top of the ranking you have the most important node, the most influential people on, on Twitter for instance. Uh, who is, which is the most famous rank? Have you uh, seen? Sure. Is a um, Google page rank, and they just uh, take all the web pages, uh, which represent the nodes, and there is a link between two web pages. If there is a HTTP, uh, is the it's called HTTP connection, HTTP link, um, and they do some maths uh, on on this graph, and. There are many uh, Python libraries specialized on doing this kind of analysis. You can compute Google page rank with NetworkX, Graph Tools, iGraph, and also Snap, which is from Stanford. Who has ever used the Snap? No one. Have a look. It's uh, quite uh, it's quite fast. Stanford University URL coach. And the the thing that is changing in the last year is the fact that network change over time, evolve over time. It's not that you have just one single graph, you do the computation and that's it, you have your ranking. If you take uh, the, Twitter, uh, the Twitter graph, at any second in time it changes. So you have new connection uh, created or destroyed. For instance, from 12 to 1, 1 AM, you have this link that disappear, this link that disappear. And you may want to recompute the Google page rank of other quantities in all this graph. And if the network is large, is big, is uh, is complicated, it, it can take some time. And if you want to have high resolution in time, the, the time of the computation could be could exceed the, the time of the update of the graph. So you can keep update your ranking in real time as the network change. So this is um, a general problem. 
uh, of course you can rely on uh, uh, big infrastructure, cloud computing. I have, as you see, a small 20, from 2009 MacBook, <laughs> which has been upgraded, but still has 8 gigabytes of RAM. And I like to do everything with, uh, with him. Uh, I also remember that people uh, went to the moon with something that was much less powerful than this. And, and when you have this perspective, when you change perspective, you start to understand the problem and try to make the algorithms and the thing more efficient instead of relying on huge expensive infrastructure. And it's possible to do this. Uh, I don't focus on Google PageRank. I think the guy in Google is much better than me in updating this graph. But I focus on uh, distances, which is a building block uh, of many other measures. Uh, if you have ever uh, heard about uh, closeness centrality or information centrality, a lot of measure, a lot of ranks, uh, apart from the Google page rank, are based on distances. And the distance is a graph, is just the number of ops uh, between two nodes. So the two red nodes here uh, ha have distance six, because there are six links connecting them. And at point t plus one, a new nodes arrive in the, in the network, and the distance between the two red nodes reduces. So now is one, two, three. You want to update this number from six to three, and you don't want to recompute all the distance, because it's basically unuseful. You can notice that some distance between uh, some groups of nodes are not affected. For instance, the green one, the distance between this guy and this guy is one and doesn't change when you had these new links. And it's the same from all the other, uh, all the other uh, green nodes. And this is not something new, actually. It's something, I mean, you can build algorithm that uh, update only the, the distance which actually change after the introduction of new hedges and uh, avoid to recompute distance like this one, from this guy to this guy, one, two, three, four. Uh, this distance doesn't change. So why you need to recompute it? It's just a waste of uh, computational power and time. So Ramalingam and reps from Microsoft Research did a nice paper in 1996, which is called On the Computational Complexity of Dynamic Graph Problem. So the dynamics here is the evolution in time. And uh, there is a nice algorithm which has been used also recently, but it has been used mainly on uh, huge uh, infrastructure. Because this algorithm needs to store at any point in time all the, distance be all the distances between any two nodes. So this is the uh, geodesic matrix or distance matrix. And the number six, for instance, is the this distance uh, between the two red nodes. And at point t plus 1, number 6 becomes 3. What the algorithm does, just change those numbers that need to be changed, while all the other remain the same. So the algorithm takes as input uh, this, this uh, matrix, uh, the new hedge, and try to minimize the computation. Okay. The, the algorithm needs to access all the distance at any point in time. And the problem is that in large graph, you have many, many distances. It's scaled as n squared, because there are n times n nodes. And recently, there is uh, there have been this uh, work uh, made at Facebook uh, in which they tried to compute all the distances between the average distance from you and any other people in the network, which is similar to computing all the distance between any pair of nodes. And actually, it's, it's quite uh, big, the, the Facebook graph. And uh, they didn't compute all of them. They did some statistical uh, analysis of all the distance. And the number which, provides, uh, which they provide you on, on this web page is uh, an estimate, which is a good estimate. Uh, for this huge, large, large graph, they use uh, infrastructure or framework like uh, Apache Giraffe, uh, which takes a billion of nodes in the computation. The interesting thing, okay, we have a problem here. We want to recompute in time, but we have this huge amount of uh, numbers we have to store somewhere. Uh, if you 
put, if we put them on, uh, on a cluster, they are spread all across different computers. And, and if we want to retrieve them, we have to have these numbers and this data going and flowing on, on the cluster. And it's not super efficient. There is something. If you look on the web page, there is um, a chart which I didn't have the internet connection before, so I tried to reproduce, reproduce it. It's not like this, but it's similar. And it says that the number of nodes, the percentage of nodes with a certain distance, for instance, between a, node i and j, is picked on a certain value. Uh, the majority of uh, pairs of nodes have distance uh, equal to 4 or 3. Uh, is what they say here, right? <coughs> three and half degree of separation. Or however, we are three ops and half uh, distance from, uh, we have a three op and, and half distance from each other. Uh, the distribution of distance is something that looks like, uh, like this. A great majority of numbers in the matrix <coughs> are all the same, OK? And uh, the idea of network L is to have a look at the matrix spot, which is the number with, which is more frequent, and remove it from the, from the matrix. This is the first step. So what I use in network L are two concepts. I will introduce uh, them. One is the sparse geodesic matrix, which usually on real graph helps to save 50% of memory. And the sparse be connected geodesic matrix, which can save up to 75%. There are graphs in which I only need 25% of the memory, which you need with the full matrix. And here is the idea. Let's take a small, a small graph, example graph, the one there. So the numbers are the nodes. The, they are connected through these gray links. And for the moment, don't pay attention to the red, blue, and uh, green circle. Okay, just look, think of this graph of eight nodes. And well, the usual geodesic matrix is you compute all the distance and it's there n times n memory. The sparse geodesic matrix uh, consider, looks uh, in, this, in this approach, we search for the most frequent number, most frequent distance. In this case, it's number one. And we just remove from from the from the matrix, and uh, uh, you save some memory. This is implemented at the moment uh, in Network L as a dictionary, which gives you back number one, whatever the key is missing. So you have a D of I J. If the pair I J is not in the dictionary representing the matrix, you get number one as a, as a result. You don't get an error. These graphs fully connected. This graph well, is. Well, this one is, but in general, does this apply to only? You can, yeah, you can consider just. I mean, it doesn't work at the moment. The library on this connected graph, but you can and all the time use them separately, analyze them separately, because the, if and they if are this. If you introduce a new node, uh, sorry, a new edge that connects them. If you introduce a new edge that connects them, I will show you what happened with the be connected approach. And um, when you have two disconnected components, they look like uh, two blocks in the matrix. And once you connect uh, them with a link, you have to fill up uh, the off-diagonal part of the block. Can you visualize it? If you have two components, yeah. they are like two matrix, in two independent matrix. And once you connect them through, once you connect the two components with a link, yeah. You have to fill up, you, you put together the two matrix in the diagonal. Yeah. You have to fill up the empty, the empty part. Yeah, and the reason I brought it up is because obviously, how would you, if, if the graph was disconnected or had separate parts, I assume you're representing you know, disconnected distances with nothing. Mm -hmm. I, will, I will show you, I will try to remove a link between 4 and 5. And let, let's see a sample in a second. So, OK, sparse geodesic matrix, you save some memory, just removing this. Quite simple. It's not huge. The second thing is try to do what is called be connected decomposition of a graph. In the be connected decomposition, you identify 
subregion of the graph, subgraph, which ha have the property to be B connected component. I will not go too much into the detail, but basically is that you can't split the graph in two parts, removing just one node within the component. So in the B-connected component decomposition, you identify in this graph three B-connected components, which are the green, the blue, and the red one. Uh, and in the B-connected component decomposition, you have special nodes, which are called articulation point, which are number four and number five. These are the only two nodes in the, in the, in the graph which can disconnect the graph in different components. So if you remove four, you get two groups. If you remove five, you get two components. If you remove uh, number six, node number six, you don't break the, the entire graph into com in disconnected component. There is always a path between any other nodes. Okay? Once you do this decomposition, you realize that any distance, any path, from one node in the green group and one node in the red group have to cross the articulation point. So if I want to go from number one to number eight, I have to cross number four and number five. If I have to go from number three to number eight, from number two to number eight, I have always to cross to pass by number four or number five. It means that once I have the distance between number, let's say, three, two, or one to number four, I can uh, reconstruct the distance to number eight because I can compute it as a distance from five to eight. So I can compute the distance from one to eight as a composition of the distance from one to the articulation point of each component, uh, go through the, the, the link between the two components, and then from five, which is an articulation point to number eight. Okay, you see, you can see this here. You, you construct what is, co is called block cut three, and it tells you that any nodes in the first component uh, have a path through uh, a, a node, uh, any other nodes in another component that must go through number four and number five. If you realize this, uh, you understand that you don't need to store the distance from 1 to 8, from 2 to 8, and so on. You can just store the, distance, the distances within a B-connected component. Is that clear? Any questions? What if one component would like multiple articulation points? Like the block cut tree is a tree, so it has no loop. Oh, okay. so once you, you have two nodes, which are in two components, there is only one, uh, one path that connects them. You can go through multiple different articulation points, but there are no loops, so there are no two, there are no, th there's only one path between them. So it's like you have only one bridge in, uh, in the river, on the river in, in Thames. So any distance, any shortest path you compute with Google Map from the south part of London, the north part of London, has to go through the bridge. So you don't need to store all the distance from the south to the north. You can store all the distance from any part on the south to the bridge, and from the bridge to any other part on the north side. Is that clear? It's a bit tricky. I'm from a maths department, so <laughs> you could expect something like this. So when, once you do this, you don't need to store uh, the distance from the green groups to the red group. It means that you can avoid to save uh, this part of the matrix. Yes? If, if you had a, if you were to build a full geodesic ma matrix, what? This one. What's the complexity of like current algorithms? The extra algorithm is, uh, uh, number of nodes time number of links uh, plus uh, number of nodes number of links log of number of nodes if I'm correct no n square log n square log n plus n k n k are the links so it's uh, 
uh, square uh, complexity, at well, least. Because I think what you're trying to do is you're trading off space for computation. Sure. Right? So yes. And in the end, yes, yeah. because I want to. The processor is fast, but the memory, more than eight, uh, is illegal to put eight gigabytes in this session. Cool. I mean, officially, it takes four, uh, this one, but I put the eight, it works. But more than this, I can't. <laughs> there are, I'm trying to really do the computation on Facebook, uh, on the Facebook app on this. <laughs> I will show you. <laughs> that may, is maybe possible. In one year, we will manage to. Um, OK, I save this part. I don't need to store the distance from the green to the red node. So column 1 is uh, node 1, row 8 is uh, node 8. And you see that there is an empty space in position 1, 8, because I don't need the distance 1, 8. I can reconstruct this distance. And once I have this, I can look for the most frequent number in each component, as I did for the sparse geodesic matrix. So I construct what I call the sparse be connected geodesic matrix. I look at component one and I say, oh, look, the number which, is, which appear uh, a lot of time is number one. I save it only once in a, in a variable. And the dictionary which represent this part of the matrix will return me one. Well, all the time I ask the distance from instance from one, from node one to node two. I don't need to store this directly. And starting from eight time eight uh, square matrix, I need only eight plus four entries and a representation of the block cut tree, which is a huge saving. This is a small example. But I did some tests. I will show you some tests on the on real network. So from the full matrix, you realize you, you look at the structure of the graph, and you realize that this is just a huge waste of memory. Okay. Can I, does this uh, only work for distances of length one, edges of length one? No distance of edge length. Not only length one. It works for. Uh, binary network. So if you have a weight yeah. on the on the link, yeah. you can do the sparsification because uh, only I mean you if there are if there are three or four classes of distances, you can remove the most frequent one. But if you have a weight on uh, on the hedge, which is the distance uh, between two nodes, uh, the length of the hedge is. 0.3, another one is 0.31. It's uh, most, more difficult to find a very frequent uh, distance. But for binary network, uh, it works for any number. Actually, in this example, the most frequent one is number one. But in real network, it's <coughs> three or five, which is the usual diameter of any uh, large, uh, large graph. OK? How much time do I have? Because my co five more minutes. Five more minutes? Okay. Okay. I okay. This is the way you reconstruct the distance from instance from node one to node eight. Basically, you follow you follow the the block cut tree, and you sum you sum the value on this on this path. And here is let's test network. Let's test it. Uh, here are a couple of uh, graphs. This is not the entire Facebook graph. It's just a smaller sample. There are around 20,000 uh, 20, nodes. And if you 100% represent the full, the full matrix, n times n entries, if you use the specification, you, get, uh, you can reduce up to 50%. 50% of the uh, of the distances have the same value, which is three or four. Uh, if you use just the B connected decomposition, uh, you can go down to 30, 40 percent. What is nice for this network Wikivote, I think it's taken from Wikipedia, if you use the sparse B connected geodesic matrix, you go down to 20 percent. So 80 percent of all the entries in the matrix are just 
uh, just a waste of memory. Yes? Uh, so what were the properties of the graphs that caused the biconnector decomposition to increase? Sorry, what? Uh, to the sparse duties in. So say again? So in two of the graphs, the Facebook one and the astrophysics one? Yes. The biconnector decomposition used more than the sparse. I was wondering if there's a reason why. The biconnector decomposition... The biconnector is from the main, from the starting graph. So it's less than 100% for everything. Two I didn't get the question very well. You say from uh, astrophysics and Facebook, and Facebook, and you say that the sparse by connected. Because it's connected, it's using up more space than the sparse. Yeah, no, but this is not. A property of a network. That but it's not using up more space. Is is this is the amount are you left? Yes, I know. Okay. But I was wondering if there's a reason why all the others seems like there's an ordering. Ah, okay, okay, okay. You see, the, the ordering is different. Okay. Okay, okay. I, I was trying to compare the two, and I didn't get the point. You can also say the same thing for one. You just say that the gray, darker gray, is lower than the light gray. Yes. This is the point. Okay, sorry. I didn't get it. I was trying to compare them. The answer is, I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, I, we thought about this, but uh, the moment doesn't come to my mind. It depends, it depends on the structure. It depends on the structure and on the, on the way you, where all, not all uh, B-connected decomposition are the same. Mm -hmm. So you can have a huge block cut tree or a small block cut tree. And sometimes you may have also just one very large biconnected component which contains 99% of the nodes. Mm -hmm. And in this case... The reason I ask is that if, they, if there are any kind of particular kind of graph trimming or sampling you could do, that would greatly enhance the compression you could do. That could be mm -hmm. If you think about like Facebook structure, it's very unusual for you to know one person and none of their friends, and they know none of your friends, which is what the biconnected decomposition is doing. Trying to find that one link between two fully connected graphs. Yeah, I was. In Facebook, I, I you're will. Not going to expect that, whereas in some of the others you this might is a very small sample, taken from somewhere I don't know where, less than uh, than twenty thousand nodes for sure. Um, I don't know what that, what's the structure, the biconnected composition of uh, of Facebook is, but it would be interesting to to explore this. Um, any other? So is this by connected decomposition something which is like quite easy to recompute if you have to? It's linear time. Okay. So while uh, distances are computed in n square log n, uh, by connected decomposition you can compute in linear time. So if the graph changes and you have to like, uh, you know, reconstruct the matrix, it's quite quick to do to, to just like reconstruct it by connected. There are some trade-offs, is a research uh, I'm doing. This is the potential in saving. Then you have to, on, uh, on real setting, understand all the, all the trade-offs. Uh, it also depends. If you have a lot of money, you put on the cluster and you forget. OK, so this is nice. And if you have around, uh, I mean, I, I hope to, this can be even lower. If this goes down to 10%, you can do on a 7 gigabyte uh, RAM uh, uh, computer like this what you are used to do on a 75 uh, gigabyte cluster. So if I reduce to 10%, 75 I think it's one of the machine was used in the Facebook uh, experiment. If you go down to 10%, you can reduce to something which is more similar to this one. It's a big challenge. I'm not saying it's uh, something I will do tomorrow. Um, OK, this is how it works. I, to do this test, I had to develop uh, something. So I wrote this free under line of codes uh, for the research. And then I said, OK, maybe I should put on the GitHub, given it works and maybe useful for other people. So this is the, how it works at the moment. But I hope it will change uh, soon. Uh, now this is what you get. <laughs> so you import network L as an L. And you can use this function if you start from a graph which <laughs> has already some nodes and, and edges, you create the, spar the sparse distance matrix and you store in a variable. Then you pick some, some nodes, let's say five and seven, 
and you ask NetWorkL to update the distance matrix and you have to provide the graph, the sparse distance, i and j, and if you want to add or remove this edge. And it will update this one here. It will change those num only those numbers who needs to be changed. So we can uh, do a quick test, maybe. Uh, I have here, oh, uh, by the notebook, I hope it works. OK, can you see it? I'm just importing the library. And I create uh, here, maybe I should uh, be bigger. OK. OK, this is just uh, import. Uh, I create here our Erdos Reni graph of uh, a thousand nodes. It's a random graph. And uh, I call the sparse distance matrix function, which just do the standard computation of this uh, of all the distance in this graph. So if we execute, this is network x. It's based on network x, which is not the fastest, but it's, uh, it's nice to do experiment. And it takes some time. It's computing all the distances between uh, all pair of nodes in this 1,000 nodes uh, graph. And it takes uh, 18 seconds. Now, here, I just create some 100 random pair of, uh, of nodes. So this is uh, just a list. It's just a list of, of pairs. So these are uh, links which I want to create in, in my graph. Uh, some of them may be already existing. So for instance, I want to add a new link between uh, uh, nodes 204 and nodes 166. And uh, for each i and j, for each new uh, edge, I use the function update distance matrix and uh, with the mode addition. So it will add all these edges. And for each one of them, it takes some milliseconds. Okay. You can start from an empty graph and add edge one by one and reconstruct the full graph. But the, the saving is, uh, is uh, quite, quite big. And it's just a real experiment. I did in a couple of months, three months. Uh, last year, it was working well. It has been tested. So for each new link added, I was computing the, with the standard algorithm, the full matrix, and I was checking all entries one by one. I did this several, several times just to be sure that what I implemented was, was right. So the one is on the GitHub, you can fully trust. Uh, and that's it, basically. We use it, uh, I mean, I know it's not for, uh, we use it this thing for uh, in the company. How do I go back here? We use this thing in the company because we compute distances in uh, what I call the worldwide network of startup. This is what the company is, uh, is analyzing. And uh, we compute all the distance between uh, any companies in the network. And we try to uh, find successful companies to predict success. So we want to compute distance between Let's say how far Apple is from WhatsApp, how far Yahoo is from WhatsApp, they are quite close. How far Uber is from the White House, and you see it's quite close. David Pluff is the guy who did the uh, Obama campaign, uh, election campaign. So when they have all the problem with legislation, <laughs> friends at the White House cannot. And we explore, the <laughs> we explore this graph, we compute all these distances. And on the graph, we see how company moves to the center or the periphery. And we use this to predict success. Airbnb was moving very fast to the center, close to Google, Facebook. And uh, you can find this computation uh, online. Uh, this network efficiency is basically closeness centrality, which is based on 
distances in uh, is a matrix of network analysis based on distances and that's it I'm, uh, I'm in time there were some questions during the since we have already a few questions within the talk, we only have time for a couple more. Can you not save some memory by eliminating the diagonal zeros? Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not huge. No, it's not huge. But, but uh, I thought about this. Actually, you can. I mean, yeah, you can if you. Inside the, um, the class which defines uh, all these uh, three type of metrics, you check if i and j are the same. But uh, since you are removing some already some nodes, uh, you, you have to check manually that i and j are the same and return at zero in this case. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you just remove them and you ask distance i i, you will get to one. But yeah. Can I do the same? Ah, uh, sure, sure. If the if it's symmetric, uh, you can. You, but it doesn't change uh, this uh, result eh? because this is hundred percent full. If you divide it by, you can do this also in the full matrix. So you divide by two this number and this number. So it doesn't reduce uh, more than this. What is Vicky vote? I don't know, you usually have this huge uh, folder with the many, many data sets and we draw on. No, I think it's, it's a network of uh, people voting uh, up and down some uh, article on Wikipedia. Yeah, okay. uh, some should be something like this. Does it work for directed? Yeah. Hmm? For directed graphs? Uh, I haven't used uh, on, uh, these are all undirected. Yeah. So I don't know if, if you put a directed graph, which is an object in network X, if it works, uh, it may be because uh, it uses just function like the neighbor of, and the neighbor should follow, like should consider the, the direction of the graph in the link. Uh, but I'm not sure. In pre of course, the algorithm and the system in it works. If it's directed, this is not uh, symmetric. The, the matrices are not symmetric. So in principle, is is. Of course, it's feasible. I don't know if you can plug directly a direct graph on network L at the moment. Okay, so I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you.